Hey, this is Chris Fernandez from Houston Combat Photography. I uh, wanted to talk to you all today about a couple of things that I did recently. I participated in a couple of World War II reenactments um, as a photographer, as a film photographer with a speed graphic camera. So before that, last year at the Museum of the American GI in College Station, Texas, from the sidelines, I took several pictures with uh, digital and film cameras, and those pictures turned out pretty well. I sent those to several of the reenactors, and they really liked them. And one of those guys eventually invited me to participate in this year's reenactment back in March. So um, I'm not a reenactor, but I geared up. I have a bunch of World War II uniforms and stuff, so I dressed up in authentic World War II herringbone 12 uniforms with 36 infantry division patch, and I went as a 36 infantry division combat photographer. 45 on my right hip, the general purpose pouch on my left hip, and I uh, took my speed graphic out on the field along with a couple of other cameras as backups and ran along with the reenactors. So um, the way those reenactments work is there's a script. So there's, you know, this squad is out on the field, they get attacked by the enemy, uh, the rest of the squad falls back, leaves some casualties behind, then the Americans get reinforcements and they counterattack the Germans and there's tanks on the field and there's explosions and machine gun fire and all that cool stuff. Um, and so what I was going to do was, my plan anyway, at the Museum of the American GI reenactment is, I would stay around the middle of the pack of the advancing Americans when they counterattack the enemy. So that way I could get the backs of the guys up ahead as they're advancing and then get the faces of the guys next to me and behind me. Um, as it turned out, it didn't exactly work um, because pretty much everybody stayed up front, so I got very few pictures of people's faces. Um, but I also had some, uh, had some other things that I learned in that reenactment. I, because I went as a soldier, I had a 45 on my right hip and a general purpose pouch tacked my gear on my left because I was thinking like a cop and a soldier and, and thinking you don't block your weapon. Well, that was kind of stupid because shooting this speed graphic the uh, film feeds in from this side. So I was pulling film holders from here, feeding it into the camp and having to switch hands, feed it in this way and then pull it back out and flip it around, uh, stick it back in the pouch, dig out a new one, all that stuff. Um, and because I was doing all that, uh, you know, the, the reenactment was fairly intense. I got into a rush and I made some really stupid mistakes during that Museum of the American GI reenactment. I uh, wound up accidentally shooting over film sheets I, I'd already shot, even though you know you have indicators showing that you've already already taken the picture. I screwed it up, missed it. Um, one time I stuck the film holder in at an angle, and by the time I realized it, I had already taken a shot and completely washed out uh, a film sheet. Um, but I still got some pretty cool pictures. Even though I wasted several shots, got some stuff that I really liked. But when I did the second reenactment, I did another one at the at Camp Mabry Muster Day 2022, just a few weeks ago. For that one, I decided I was not going to be a soldier. I wasn't going to carry a weapon because that just got in the way. For the second one, I went as a war correspondent. Civilian war correspondent, just like my hero, Ernie Pyle. And what I did with my gear this time is I put a general purpose pouch on each side. So what I would do is I had the film holders in here. I would pull a film holder, stick it into the camera, take the picture, um, then take it out and stick it into this general purpose pouch on this side. So I was feeding from this side to this side and it worked out a lot better. However, um, I still wound up screwing up, making some mistakes because I, I was in a rush. So um, the thing with these reenactments, like I said, they can get pretty intense, uh, the little bit of experience I have with them, and trying to do a whole lot of things at once. Also, um, I had, came up with a good idea of trying to do uh, something the way the real combat photographers did it during World War II, and that just screwed me up, made me make more mistakes, so I'm not doing that again. Um, I, still, I still wasted a couple of film sheets at the second reenactment in Austin, but... I got some pretty cool pictures of both reenactments, and um, I was, I'm actually very happy with the results. So um, there were certain lessons that I learned. One is you, I mean, just like in actual combat, slow down, don't get flustered, just one problem at a time. Um, when you rush is when you screw things up. So I learned that in both of these, I rushed and I screwed things up. And uh, next time I do this, I'm not going to make the same mistakes, hopefully. 
Um, I also learned, remember that there's an audience because I was taking pictures. Sometimes I took pictures, I thought, oh, this is a great shot, but I was kind of in the moment and totally forgot there's an audience in the background. And so I've got this big civilian audience um, in my cool combat shot. Uh, so you have to remember that stuff. One of the things I, I thought I should answer, um, cause it's probably a good question is, is was it really like being in combat? And the answer is no. Um, and again, I'm not a reenactor, but what I got from the reenactment crowd is that, uh, none of them thought, oh yeah, you know, this is really like being at war. They know it's not They're They're there to, uh, respect the history there to show respect to the guys who actually fought the war. But none of them, at least as far as I could tell, none of them were thinking, yeah, this is just like the real thing. Um, cause the biggest thing with combat is that there's responsibility. When you're a soldier in combat, you're responsible for your sector, your fire team, your squad. If you're a leader, you're responsible for accomplishing the mission. And uh, very often that mission is more important than your life. And that sense of responsibility you cannot get in a reenactment, not because of any fault of the reenactors, not because of any fault of the organizers, you just, you just can't replicate it. So in that way, no, it really was not like actual combat. Um, but there were moments. There, were, there was one particular moment where I was down in some brush, I was prepping my camera to take pictures. There was a uh, reenactor firing his M1 Garand about six feet away from my head. And as I'm you know, messing with the camera, I'm, I'm feeling the concussion and the, the blanks on the M1 Garand are, are fairly loud. And that did take me back to um, you know, one of the missions where I'm sticking up out of the back of an MRAP and, and the gunner is firing the 50 cal just a few feet away and you know, feeling all that concussion and blast and stuff. Um, or another mission where I was on the crest of a hill and the Afghans are firing their RPK machine guns uh, across the valley into the tree line and you know, and I'm trying to do something else. So, you know, there were, there were little bits and flashes. Um, there was also the really cool feeling of all the chaos, and it was pretty much chaos going on in the battlefield. All the chaos is happening, but I am completely focused on, I am doing this, I am taking pictures. And whatever else is happening, somebody else has that, I've got my job, my mission. I, I, liked, I liked that feeling. Um, so it was pretty cool and uh, so the, the results were great. One really cool thing that I learned is that because of the, uh, the size of the, the 4x5 film sheets, the large format film sheets, they have so much detail that you can break up every 4x5 sheet into multiple pictures if you need to. So here's a 35 millimeter uh, negative. There have been some great pictures taken on 35 millimeter cameras, uh, even, especially in combat. But here's a four by five film sheet. There's a, there's a size of a 35 in comparison. You could get a whole bunch of these on one four by five. So on some of the four by five pictures I took, I looked at them and realized, oh, there's an audience in there or there's something in there that I need to cut out. I still have a great picture just using this third of it or this half of it. Um, and uh, that was really cool because it turns out I can make, I can get multiple pictures out of each exposure sometimes. Um, but anyway, it was a, uh, it was a really cool experience. And um, I really want to do more of these. I especially want to do the uh, reenactment, the Pacific Assault uh, reenactment at the Nimitz Museum in Fredericksburg, Texas. They use a flamethrower. I want to get a picture of a guy burning out a bunker with a flamethrower. I really hope to get into a World War II aircraft to take pictures in flight with the, with the, uh, film camera so we'll see uh see if i can get to do some more cool stuff and hopefully i'll have some uh more videos of reenact more videos to show you pictures from reenactments in the future so thanks guys until next time take it easy